One of the more popular slots for unique items in Diablo 2 is the helmet, and this is because we have a ton of options ranging from simply interesting all the way to best in slot thanks to the unique features available to specific uniques in this space. As usual, let's start out with the normal difficulty uniques, both because it makes sense, but also because there's a number of interesting low-level helmets that may just surprise you. Starting with Biggin's Bonnet, the unique cap, which falls into an interesting category of being one of only a handful of off-weapon enhanced damage sources with a reasonable amount of boost. While not as impactful early on, this can make this particular helmet quite interesting to use, at least as you progress throughout the game and get higher base damage weapons. Beyond that, it also has a few other nice boosts like attack rating, life, and mana, though it is worth noting it does not come with a socket naturally, it's just all of my bonnets are socketed since I only seem to find them on, well, solo cell found runs, and up, ended up using this one into Nightmare. Next up is Tarn Helm, which used to be one of the most sought after helmets in the game before Lord of Destruction released, and for obvious reasons. With plus all skills, decent magic find, and gold find, all with only a level 15 requirement, and before that it had no requirement, it's it's extremely, exceptionally nice for a helmet for its level requirement in LOD and Resurrected, even by today's standards, even though its bonus list is fairly short. After that, we have Coif of Glory, the blinding helmet. While not something that's likely to be used into the endgame, Coif of Glory can be an interesting early tool for a number of ranged or even fast attacking characters, thanks to not only the blinding effect mentioned, but also the lightning resist and improved defense against missiles, which can help out in some early areas. But it does get quickly outclassed as you approach the mid game. Next, we have Dusk Deep, an all around just good, albeit fairly mundane, helmet for the low levels, mostly thanks to the fairly significant 15% resist all, but it also does have a nice pinch of damage reduction as well as a plus maximum damage that can help out quite a bit, at least early on. The latest I've used one of these was into Mid Nightmare, but it wouldn't be a terrible helmet for solo self found through hell if you didn't find anything better, and it didn't need the plus skills from something like Lore. Next up, we grab Howl Tusk by the Horns. This helmet is interesting for ranged characters, but I find it infuriating for melee characters. And that's because it's pretty much built around keeping things away. With a 25% chance to cause fear, as well as a chance to knock back enemies, it keeps them back. Though it does have some okay bonuses in its minor stats, such as damage taken to mana, which can help you stay topped off mana-wise if you're taking a lot of hits. In a similar vein, we have Face of Horror, with a 50% chance to cause an enemy to flee, but this helmet does see a few more uses than Howl Tusk, mostly because a fairly large strength boost as well as a bonus damage to undead and an okay boost to all resists. It's pretty solid helmet if you end up having to go with something like this, like an insight bill or on an act 2 mercenary in early nightmare, and need to square up that extra strength while doing what you can to keep enemies off of him. Weirdly it seems the trend of the end of normal helmets are great mercenary helmets, and undead crown is no exemption. With life leech, poison resist, half freeze duration, and buffs against undead, it works out as a fairly solid early mercenary helmet to get you some nice modifiers on all but Act 3 mercenaries. That said, some necromancers have used it in the past for skeleton mastery boosts, but you're usually better off with lore or our next helm, Worm Skull. This is because Worm Skull is fairly similar in that it's life leech and some poison resist, but it sheds a few of the other modifiers in favor of adding a bit of poison damage, but more importantly, a plus one to all necromancer skill levels, which gives you a nice little boost across the board, though unfortunately, unlike the old days, this helmet is a little more quick to be outclassed by the other other available plus skill helmets across the board, pretty much only beating out Undead Crown. In the exceptional slots, we actually have one of those plus skill helmets that beat it out, and that's Peasant Crown, an oddly underrated helmet with plus all skills, boost to vitality and energy, replenish life, and a rather odd bump to run walk speed that most people forget about on this helmet. There's only a few builds that I'll favor this over lore on, but it is still a decent helmet for a lot of builds if you already have enough lightning resist elsewhere. After that, we have our first damage reduction helmet, the Rock Stopper. It packs faster hit recovery, decent resist, and damage reduction by percent, and is repeatedly ignored by players in spite of its utility as a strong, tanking-centered helmet. While it does lack some desirable helmet traits, if you can fill those gaps elsewhere, this is a fairly reliable mid-level helmet that you can easily beat hell with while using. Speaking of beating hell, we have one of my favorite sleeper helmets, and that is Steel Skull, which, like Biggin's Bonnet, doesn't come with that socket, but it does come with all the rest of these stats. 
increased attack speed being super uncommon for helmets, the faster hit recovery being nice, the dual leech being really solid for physical damage dealers like Amazon or Paladin, and it packs a variable magic find percent that can be really useful for finding incidental items while going through the game, and the percent is competitive with Tarnhelm, and at its peak it's even competitive with Harlequin Crest, which is still about two rows away. Next up, we have Dark Side Helm, which is kind of like a souped up Nadir or Coif of Glory, where it's built around robbing the enemy of sight. It packs Cloak of Shadows charges, as well as a chance to cast Dim Vision, which is the area effect of the blind spell when struck. On top of that, it also packs a bit of fire resist, cannot be frozen, and mana leech, all of which are desirable traits, and it gets a pinch of defense boost every level to help you keep from getting hit as much. I rarely find it when I need it, but it is still a really solid mid-level helmet that, if you should find it, one character who needs a bit of mana leech and needs a little extra protection, it can be really nice. After that, we have the Amazon Helmet, Valkyrie Wing, which gives us Amazon skill levels, faster run walk, faster hit recovery, and mana per kill. While not necessarily best in slot for most Amazon builds, there's still quite a few that can get some decent utility out of each of these abilities, and is also funnily enough, one of the helmets that falsely gets my hopes up a lot because I always forget if winged helms or spired helms are elite. Now we have one of my guilty pleasure helmets, Blackhorn's Face. I find sick pleasure in combining this with Razor Tine on a mercenary to reach the slow target cap when he stabs enemies. Even though it's not super effective, it is just kind of fun. This helmet does have other nice features though, such as lightning resist and absorb, retaliatory lightning damage and prevent monster heal, which can actually make it useful on a number of characters while you're working towards something better. Though, speaking of mercenary helmets, Crown of Thieves is actually one of the go-to helmets in the mid-game thanks to its massive life leech for a helmet, combined with solid dexterity and life boosts, not to mention a dab of fire resist as well. And if your mercenary gets the final hit, you can even count on a bit of extra gold. Is it best in slot? God no, but it's a solid life leech helmet that can just get the job done when you need the job done. Though in terms of life leech helms, very few can compete with our next helmet the infamous Vampire Gaze, with all of its varied abbreviations. It's still just a really solid helmet, packing dual leech, cold damage to slow down enemies of course, decent defense, solid damage reduction percent, and even a flat magic damage reduction that helps far more than you'd think. This used to be the go-to helmet for a lot of characters, but after a few changes to the game mechanics it has fallen just a little bit behind, but it is still really freaking good rather than godly like it used to be. Now we move on to the elites, starting with probably the most infamous of the pack, commonly just called Shaco. The Harlequin Crest lives up to its reputation as far as magic find helmets goes. Thanks to plus two all skills and plus two to all attributes, a scaling life and mana boost as well as a percent damage reduction all paired with magic find. While more specialist helmets can easily win out on specific builds, this is just the most reliable helmet for many builds to go for and packs with it a lot of magic find, which tends to result in people flocking to it for farming gear even if something else is stronger. While I would love to segue into one of the stronger helmets, we've got two stinkers get out of the way first, starting with Steel Shade. It's a mana leech replenish life fire absorb helmet that requires a ton of strength and level 62 that I would honestly rather use lore than in many cases, since I can get that mana leech elsewhere with better mods attached and I have honestly never bothered equipping this one on a character outside of desperation or wanting to stand in a firewall. The second disappointment, which thankfully is not as disappointing except that it gets your hopes up, is a veil of steel. Pretty much just used for stat boosts and fairly respectable resists, it doesn't really pack too many things that are interesting, but maybe I'll get around to making a Man of Steel build that uses it for meme reasons, but it, like Steel Shade, just doesn't really get much of any use for me outside of true desperation. Though as we promised, there are stronger helms, and the other unique Spired Helm is not a disappointment, and that is Nightwing's Veil. Plus two all skills, boosted cold damage, plus dexterity, cold absorb, half freeze duration, and a massive reduction in strength requirements to equip makes this a really nice helmet for a cold damage dealer. Especially the cold sorceress and she already pierces resist, making that plus cold damage go the extra mile. The plus skills on it help a ton too and can be used by any class, and I've used these on a number of builds, though slip it on a blizzard or orb sorceress and you will not be disappointed. Next is probably the most popular mercenary helmet, or at least the most desirable, and that is Andariel's Visage. 
Another plus all skills helmet, but this time with increased attack speed, life lead, strength, and poison perks in several respects. The only reason I generally leave this on the sidelines is you pretty much have to be using something to compensate for the loss of fire resist if you're using this whether on a mercenary or a player, because that's a pretty hefty chunk. The most popular being a Ruby Jewel of Fervor to boost attack speed more while overcoming the fire resistance, not to be confused with the other Ruby Jewel of Fervor that boosts damage with attack speed. I like it, but outside of a couple builds, I generally don't use it on mercenaries too often anymore due to the areas I run, namely Travancle, Chaos Sanctuary, and the Bale Waves where fire will wreck your shit. Next is an often adored helmet that is actually kind of hard to find and super stat hungry, and that is Crown of Ages. Packing plus all skills, faster hit recovery, resist all, and a percent damage reduction, along with natural open sockets, it can be a nasty helmet in the right hands, especially if you find great items for those sockets. While I rarely recommend this helmet on builds, outside of certain meme builds, it is a really strong option if you have the strength and setup to support it, and the need to be in the thick of things thanks to its massive flexibility and survivability perks. The last normal elite helm before we get to the circlets is Giant Skull, a rather special helmet that doesn't look like it should be at first, but thanks to being a source of crushing blow, with knockback, and a boost to strength along with reasonable stat requirements, and open sockets, this helmet is just as flexible as Crown of Ages, and one of my favorite sleeper helmets for Act 1 mercenaries as well as Boazons, letting it do a lot more than it seems like it should at first glance. Also, it just looks cooler than the other bone helmets, because, well, Resurrected decided to make the other ones floppier. On the circlet front, we have two helmets. First, Kira's Guardian, with faster hit recovery, cannot be frozen, and massive resist boost. If you throw a socket in it, it can actually be really nice to use for a number of characters. It will almost never be the ideal helmet or best in slot, but it's also just really good at providing resist when you need it. If you can't think of a better helmet, Though, by the time you find it, you'll usually have found something better for each given build, you could still use this for covering those resistance gaps. And last, and way far from least, is Griffin's Eye, really sought after helmet, and at first it may look like it's solely for lightning characters, and to an extent you would be right, but with plus all skills, 25% faster cast rate, all in addition to really strong lightning perks, it can be useful to a lot of spell spamming builds, even if they don't use that lightning aspect of it. Though, to see it really shine, throw it in a Javazon, Lightning Sorceress, or Holy Shock Paladin that does not use Dream, and it will be quite surprising in its potency.